We now deal with velocity transformations. Because velocity is defined in terms of the position vector, it depends on observer's frame of reference as well, and it's not unique. Nolan Ryan, in our example, will throw a fastball 100 miles per hour while traveling on a train moving toward a batter at 50 miles per hour. And the first thing we're going to do is just use our everyday intuition to see what we think the batter would see the baseball at. So uh, here's our batter. There's the batter. We're going to call the batter the unprimed observer and we're going to call Nolan Ryan the primed observer. The choice of which one is the primed or which one the unprimed is purely arbitrary but once you make that decision then you must follow it. So if you're making observations for instance seen by the batter you would say that those are unprimed observations. If you made observations with the person over here Nolan Ryan you would say those are primed observations. Now Nolan Ryan, at least in his heyday, could throw a ball 100 miles per hour. So that is the velocity of the baseball, little v. And we put a prime on it, and it's in the x direction. The prime indicates that it was measured by this person here, Ryan. And the little v indicates that it's the object, the object being the baseball. To Nolan, he's at rest. This is just how he fast he throws the baseball in the same way that you'd be rest if you were at the planet Earth. Now, Nolan is on a cart or train moving at 50 miles per hour. But who's measuring that? That would be the batter that sees the train measure. Nolan doesn't believe it's 50 miles per hour. Nolan believes that the train is at rest. He believes that the batter is charging the mound, if you would, at 50 miles per hour. So, based on the way it says, moving toward the batter, we know in the problem that it's being said that this is the person measuring that. So we're going to call that capital V, 50 miles per hour. And that means that is the velocity of the card of Ryan, if you would, as measured by the unprimed observer, and it's moving 50 miles per hour in the x direction. Now in everyday life, we don't write everything down like that. We don't have to. And I will show you that in a minute, but this is the way that we go about writing problems in terms of mathematics. So here's questions. What's the velocity of the fastball according to Nolan Ryan? 100 miles per hour in the I hat direction. It's V prime. What is the velocity of the baseball according to the batter? Well, let's think about that for a minute. If Nolan Ryan didn't even throw the baseball, if he just held the baseball in his hand, the batter would see the ball coming toward him at 50 miles per hour because it's attached to the train. And eventually the ball would get to the batter, and I guess he could hit it, okay? Now, because Ryan throws the ball at 100 miles per hour as seen by the train, the batter is going to see it coming even faster. All right, this is like it's running with a tailwind, if you would want to think about it that way. So how fast? Well, our everyday tuition says that you just add these. 100 plus 50, and the batter sees it coming as 150 miles per hour. And that is, in fact, correct. <coughs> our everyday intuition is right, provided, actually, that the object is going at very slow speeds compared to the speed of light. And I'll come back and explain that in a minute. So how can we prove that? I mean, that's intuition. How can we prove this mathematically? What is the equation we need that gives us that? Well, it turns out the equation that gives us that are the velocity transformation equations. And it can be found from our position transformation equation and the definition of velocity. So using what we've already found previously, we can get this equation. The velocity equation that I will derive says that the velocity of the object is seen by the unprimed observer is equal to the velocity is seen by the primed observer 
plus the velocity of the unprimed observer, I'm sorry, of the primed observer as measured by the unprimed observer. Now that sounds very confusing, so one of the things that we can do is write down an everyday example. So this is the baseball, that's why the little v, measured by Ryan. I'm sorry, by batter. Batter being the unprimed. And this right here, this is the baseball measured by the prime person, which is Ryan. And this is the primed observer, Ryan, as measured by the unprimed person, that is by the batter. So it says, add Ryan's velocity to the velocity of the baseball as seen by Ryan to get the velocity of the baseball seen by the batter. How do we do that? Let's go back and remember that when we did the position transformation equation in a previous video, we had this equation here. So if you need to go back, go back and review the video that had that equation. Now, since that's the position vector, we can subtract two position vectors to find the displacement. And if we subtracted two position vectors of the baseball at two different places as seen by the unprimed position, we would get the change in the position vector seen by the prime plus the change in the position vector of Ryan. This is simply just finding the final and the initial position vectors for these. So for the final, there'd be a final R of the baseball seen by the batter. There'd be initial position of the baseball seen by a batter. Subtract those two, you get delta R. They would also have had a final position seen by Ryan and an initial position seen by Ryan. And when you subtracted that, you would have got the delta R prime. And there was a final position of Ryan and an initial position of Ryan. When you subtract that, you found the change in the position of Ryan is seen by the batter. If you don't see this, set down and work it out. Draw two places and work out each one of these vectors, initial and final, and subtract them. We can also divide by time. I'm going to divide by the change in time as measured by the batter. And what I do to one side of the equation, I must do to the other side of the equation. So this is nothing more than algebra. Now, at the moment, I said I divided by the time delta t, and I don't have a prime. That's the time measured by the batter. And people never really thought about whether or not the batter and Ryan measured the same time. Do all observers measure? In fact, it was thought that time was a fixed thing, something that couldn't change. And so it was absolute. And we now know that that is not true at higher speeds. I'll come back to that in just a second. Uh, to find velocity, I need to take a limit. So I'm going to take the limit as delta t goes to 0. So that's on my left-hand side. And once you do the left-hand side in math, you must do the right-hand side. So the limit as delta t goes to 0 of delta r prime over delta t plus delta big R. Oops, my fault. I uh, left off my limit. So let's go back for a second. The limit is delta t goes to zero of delta r over delta t. Now this is the measure of the baseball's displacement divided by time as delta t goes zero. Everything has been measured by the batter. By definition, that is the velocity of the baseball seen by the batter. 
I'm going to leave this term here for a minute. And I'm going to leave it because the position vector change of the baseball, that is the displacement of the baseball, was measured by the Ryan, the prime, but the time was measured by the batter. They weren't measured by the same thing, and that's not what the definition of velocity says. It says the change in the position <coughs> with respect to the change in time, but it should all be measured by one observer. Over here, I have the change in the position of Ryan, that is his displacement, measured by the batter. Over the change in time measured by the batter, that's the velocity of Ryan. What about this? Well, what happened, but they didn't write it down, was everybody assumed that the change in time measured by the batter was the same as the change in time measured by Ryan. This is true for speeds much less than the speed of light. The problem with not writing it down was when they began to work in electricity and magnetism and with light, and they continued to use the formula that's derived, they began to get inconsistencies and they didn't know where it was. When you make an assumption, always, always write it down. This is just a good rule. Then when a model fails to work in whatever, you will have a chance to go back and take and see whether or not your assumption is true. They had no experimental data that said that this was ever true. This was just something that they thought philosophically must be true. We had to have a completely different view of space and time when we found, and this leads to Einstein's theory of special relativity. If we have enough time, we may come back and deal with that and with the change in the equations to what are called the Lorentz transformations. For now, I'm going to make that assumption that it is true, and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change this to delta t prime goes to zero. I'm going to change this to delta t prime since it says it's the same as delta t. And once I do that, this is the displacement of the baseball measured by the prime observer over the change in time measured by the prime observer. That's the velocity of the baseball measured by the prime observer. And in that case, I've obtained my equation, and Mr. LaFleur, back a long time ago in high school geometry, taught me that when you complete something, that is quat erat demonstratum, that which was to be proved. So that is the proof. This formula works. Its only assumptions are the definition of velocity, the fact that vectors of position acid vectors, and this assumption, which turns out not to always be true, it's only true for speeds much less than the speed of light. However, for all things in your everyday life, the classical physics, cars, boats, planes, rockets, this is in fact true. It creates minimal error. It's actually slightly an error even at those speeds, but the error is so much, it just doesn't matter. You can't measure it. All right. Let us see if we can actually use this formula now to actually get our original problem to work out. Remember that we had that the baseball, as seen by Nolan Ryan, was going 100 miles per hour I hat. And I remind you that we thought the train was going at 50 miles per hour I hat. So the baseball, as seen by the batter, according to our formula, is 100 miles per hour I hat added to 50 miles per hour I hat. So the baseball goes 150 miles per hour I hat just as we know from everyday experience.